I was just coming from Israel, being very, very young, and I auditioned for him. I was doing Anina in the production of St. of Bleecker Street by Minotti in Wolf Trap, and he came to one of these performances. He asked me to sing some Mozart arias. He hired me on the spot. And immediately, he was offering me a contract. Julius immediately asked me if I could the next day sing for an ailing soprano. He created all of us. We all came from the New York City Opera. Why? Because he chose us. Julius Rudell was one of the greatest musicians that I ever met. His importance to the opera world is just unparalleled. The man built the City Opera into one of the great opera companies in the world. Julius Rudell provided the most opportunities for young American singers and the most opportunities for American composers. Brilliant, thoughtful, dedicated, European-American. Yeah, he was a mensch. <laughs> Maestro Rudel was born in Vienna. He was musical from the get-go, and he got to go to the Vienna Staatsoper and see a lot of wonderful performances at a very formative age. But of course, that was not to continue. Being from a Jewish family, he and his family were obliged to emigrate. They came, very luckily for us, here to New York. He supported himself in all sorts of uh, very humble ways. He saw an ad in the newspaper about a opera company that was forming at the city center in New York. It was called the People's Opera. A lot of that has to do with the pricing of tickets. He went and applied for a job as a rehearsal pianist. He became quickly indispensable to the company as a schedule maker, orchestra pit assistant, he sometimes filled in in roles when people were sick. The opera house teaches a conductor. I mean, it's a school of hard knocks, you know, you really you go through that, you really know your business. In 1956, the general director at the time, Eric Leinsdorf, wasn't working out well. A committee of singers marched off to the board and they said, we've got your guy here. Wonder of wonders, the board listened to them. He became general director in 1957. In the next three years, very famously, were the great years of the all-American seasons. There is a whole lot of American operas written by composers living in America, which are wonderful, and so we decided to put on an entire season devoted entirely to American operas. This was unprecedented, and it's still unprecedented. What opera company has ever done something like that. If you look at the canon of American operas that are successful, most of those came out of the New York City Opera. That was partially because he knew what a good story was. He was always interested, not just in the music. He was also a theatrical man. Years before anybody else was doing this, he was bringing directors from the theater to direct at New York City Opera. Phone rang one day and Julius Rudell called, said, how, how'd you like to direct an opera? And I was hooked. He had a remarkable judgment as to what an audience would react to. He was also responsible in, in great measure for the f starting of Live from Lincoln Center. Tonight we are proud to be your hosts at a live telecast. We brought in a camera and did the first live transmission of an opera. It was really Julius who was so supportive of that at the very beginning. He knew what we were talking about. There was an aura about him. We were supposed to do our job and no shenanigans. Okay. What are you still doing here? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't I'm know. I'm so sorry. sorry. Julius expected you to know the cue. You went in, you had to know, back, this way it goes. And you know, I made sure I did. But he was also, I mean, on the other side of things, I found him to be one of the most generously compassionate and affectionate people I've ever worked with. Some of us were invited to his home with his lovely wife, Rita. You know, on my father's 90th birthday, 
we threw him a party. And Matthew Epstein said it so beautifully. He had 70 years of collaboration in the room with him. Sometimes I think we forget that he was also the founding music director of the Kennedy Center, also the music director of the Buffalo Philharmonic, Wolf Trap, the Caramore Center. Also, Meister Rudell conducted 200 performances at the Metropolitan Opera. <laughs> The song title that applies to it all. I did it all for love. <laughs> he felt very much that the opera world was his other family. There were two families. There was us, and then there was the music world. And City Opera, for those 22 years, was a musical family. So when City Opera folded, and it troubled him to see the company disappear. That was a very dark time for him, and we all tried to cheer him up. But I also know that he was so delighted to meet with Michael Capasso and Roy Niederhofer. Very near the end of his life, I believe it was the last business meeting that he actually took. I think the resurrection of the company, or the rebirth of the company, is in a way a great tribute to him to follow the model that he established. He was our father figure. We always kind of looked to him in times of crisis and celebrated with him in times of joy. We miss him so much. I love him very much. We have been together for many, many, many years. Then we lost a great friend. I can't think of a memorial more apt and more exciting than to resuscitate the New York City Opera in, in Julius's name. There was Julius, and there was Julius. And Julius got it done. And now, in his name, let's get it done. We will return shortly for the second half of tonight's opera. Thank you for staying with us.